Well, good morning and welcome again to Word for the Week, our online book study series here at Cornerstone Faith Community Church. My name is Pastor Jeremy Heitkamp. I'm so glad to be with you as we take a look at chapter 7 this week of Max Licato's book, Traveling Light. Chapter 7, um, talking about the idea that it's a jungle out there. Um, in other words, the idea of loneliness, finding ourselves in places where we are feeling all by ourselves, all on our lo- uh, all, all by ourselves, <clears throat> all on our own, uh, without any kind of hope. Um, it's a very, very difficult, terrible place to find ourselves. Um, at the beginning of the chapter, on page 55, um, Max Licato brings to mind from Psalm 23 the words, He restores my soul. He restores my soul. He, he gives me hope, in other words. Uh, deep down inside of me, he gives me hope that I can succeed, I can do it, I can make it, I can, whatever the, the situation might be. Um, and so, look, Max Licato brings up two really great points here at the very beginning of the chapter. He says, <clears throat> if you're thinking about yourself kind of like being in a jungle, and you're all alone, and there's nobody there to, to sort of help you figure out how to get out, which way to go, which way to turn, which path to follow, there's, there's a couple of key problems happening in that moment. The first one he mentions at the bottom of page 55 is this. You were not made for this place. Drop you in the center of an avenue or a building. You could sniff your way back home, but here in, a sky, in the sky-blocking foliage, here in trail-hiding thickets, you are out of your element. You weren't made for this jungle. That's the first problem of loneliness. We, as these perfect human creations that God intended us to be, without sinfulness, of course, but <clears throat> as humans, we were designed perfectly to be with one another, to, to be together, to work together, to, to, to strive together. And so when we find ourselves all alone and on our own, uh, loneliness is wrong for us because we're not made for it. We're not designed to be by ourselves all the time. And then the second problem at the very bottom of page 55 is that we aren't equipped to be in this place. I was thinking about <coughs> the things I would need if I was gonna find myself stuck in the middle of a jungle what are some things that I would really, really want with me? Well, obviously, I would want some kind of a weapon, I guess, like a, maybe a knife or um, I suppose maybe even a gun. I don't know. But I would want something to protect me. I would want something that I could use to, to, to boil water and cook, so like a pot. Um, I'd probably want something that I could start a fire with, maybe some wood or matches, something of that nature. So there are things that I need to be equipped with when I find myself in the midst of of a jungle, in the midst of loneliness. And if I don't have those things, then life is immensely more complex and difficult and seemingly impossible because I'm not equipped to be in that place. And so the two big problems for us with loneliness, with (coughs) feeling completely on our own, is that first of all, we weren't made for that kind of life, and secondly, we aren't equipped for it. On page 57, um, Max Licato kind of tries to turn the page a little bit from the the sort of depressing idea of being stuck all by ourselves on our own loneliness um, to say what would it take for that journey to change, for there to be a restoration of hope for you, for you to... um, come out of that loneliness. Uh, The first thing he says we need is a person. We need somebody who could actually guide us. So if you go back to that jungle idea, right? If you're going to try to get out of there and you have no idea where you're going, you're going to have to have somebody that does. And so somebody's going to have to show you the way out of there. Of course, that person's going to have to have good direction. They're going to have to actually know where they're going. What sense would there be in following someone who has no idea what they're actually doing or where they're going? And, and this is the beauty of Psalm 23. He restores my soul. God, as our faithful shepherd, intends 
to lead us out of difficulty, trial, tribulation, loneliness, frustration, anger. And the great thing is, he is the one who can do it, and he knows where to go. He knows where to take us. The problem for us, I think, in something like loneliness, <coughs> and honestly, the problem for us when we think about what it means to travel light, when we carry this heavy burden of, of everything, sin, guilt, shame, frustration, anger, um, worry, anxiety, the problem for us is this. We so often forget that we need someone to move us. I think if I was lost in the middle of a jungle, I might actually just kind of break down. I probably would just probably sit on the, the floor of the jungle and go, well, this is it. This is where I die because I don't know. There, there's no way that I'm going to get out of here. I would probably just give up, honestly. But God doesn't do that. God has in mind to work for us, for our good, to take us in those moments when we can't anymore, but he still can. And he's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. Well, that's pretty refreshing. That's, that's the kind of baggage I want to lay down, um, to not have to figure it out all by myself, but to know that there's someone who is working to restore me, to restore my soul, to lead me along, to show me where to go. And he knows exactly where I need to be. Um, as I was thinking about this jungle motif, I was reminded of a, a show that, um, that Sarah and I watch occasionally. I believe it's called Homestead Rescue. And the idea is there are people who have endeavored to go and live off the grid in places like Colorado or Alaska and other places. <clears throat> of course, living off the grid takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of knowledge. It takes a lot of um, willingness to work hard. Well, these places that this show goes to are places where people are trying to live off the grid and create a homestead, but they have no idea what they're doing. And they're failing miserably. Well, the other day um, I was watching an episode and the biggest problem for this one particular homestead was that they had a tremendous number of predators around their property. They had bears, they had um, large animals, and they had mountain lions. Now the woman who was living here was deathly, deathly afraid of predators. And so she didn't want to have things like chickens or goats on their homestead because she thought it would attract predators. And she didn't want to grow a garden because she thought it would attract predators. And they had to help her get over her fear of the predators. <coughs> How did they do that? Well, the, the person who was going to help her do this says, you know, the best way to get over it is to just address it. And so they went walking out onto the property, into the property, and they found tracks for a mountain lion. And they followed those tracks. And sure enough, they found this mountain lion. They saw it uh, from a distance. Um, and th that woman had to come sort of to grips with the fact that here's this predator. Now, what would I do if I came across this predator? And so they, you know, helped her to learn how to shoot a gun and things like that so she could protect herself. But the point of it is this. Sometimes the hardest part of our loneliness, our frustration, our anxiety, our worry, all the, all, all the stuff we carry with us, sometimes the hardest piece of dealing with that is just simply recognizing that it exists, that it's there. Nothing we can do about it. We've got to figure out how we keep moving forward in light of the fact that it's there. Now, the beauty of this particular book, the beauty of the idea of God restoring our souls, and even the idea of this homestead thing is this. There is relief that's offered. When we're still working through how do we live with predators, how do we get out of the jungle, there's a relief that's coming. There's a relief, a help that's on the way. His name is Jesus, the Savior, the Shepherd, and his father, God, and their intention is to take us from this place of loneliness, 
frustration, anger, anxiety, worry, and restore us back to what we were originally designed to be, equipped to be, made to be, which is together with one another, with God our Father, with Christ. Loneliness is not what we're designed for. We aren't equipped for that. We're equipped to be together with the brothers and sisters in Christ, together with Christ and together with our God for sin and all of these other things, anxiety, worry, so on and so forth, separates us. But <clears throat> he has promised to restore our soul. And so that restoration process is bringing us back from loneliness, worry, anxiety, into togetherness with him. I hope you guys have a great week this week. Um, we're going to be looking at chapter 8 next week. Um, until then, hope you have just a, a wonderful week and, and lots of blessings this week. We'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye.